Episode 73, Zodiac Killer Case, Maybe. Reasons I think Gary Posty could be the Zodiac Killer. Gary's timeline fits to the crimes and murders. His location fits the Kathleen Johns and Donna Lass crimes. And Gary was arrested in his lifetime. This is a list of the Zodiac's letters to the newspapers and a few other people. And if you look at this list, you'll notice a lot of 1969 and 1970 letters. And then by 1971, they kind of drop off. And that is supposedly the time that Gary moved to the western Sierra Nevada mountains of California, kind of the gold rush area, a little south of that. And so this, he's, he fits in perfectly with this timeline of the letters. And you'll notice at the bottom here, when we get to the bottom of the list, when he leaves, like in 71 or 72, he might even left in 74, is kind of the last letter there, last three letters, and then there's a drop to the 1978 letter. And so he might have returned at that time. The Kathleen Johns and Donna Lass crimes. I haven't brought these cases up. These took place after the murder of Paul Stein, the cab driver in San Francisco. But if you look at the location of Gary Posty's house, he is way south of Lake Tahoe, where that crime happened with Donna Lass, where she was murdered. And he, his location of his house is kind of on a path directly to where the situation happened with Kathleen Johns on the way to the San Francisco Bay area you would take that route to get to San Francisco, or you could take that route to get to San Francisco. It lines up perfectly. So this is another reason that Gary Posty seems like the Zodiac Killer. Then you have this arrest for spousal abuse at the end of his life. He might have been abusing her since the time that he met her, and since he was really old and frail, someone finally called the police on him. And this last tidbit, that his father was a lifetime member of the Moose River Fish and Game Club, meaning that he probably was a hunter his life, and then Gary also was a hunter. Reasons I do not think Gary Posty is the Zodiac Killer. There needs to be a connection to the San Francisco murder. The physical description doesn't seem to match him. And there's not enough evidence of a, of a maniac's behavior. Did Gary Posty live in San Francisco? Did he work in San Francisco? How would he know that this neighborhood, the Presidio Heights neighborhood, would all be quiet on a Saturday night and he wouldn't be seen? So that's something that's missing. Additionally, the Zodiac's description doesn't match Gary Posty's description, in my opinion. The Zodiac Killer was supposed to be barrel-chested, had a widow's peak, was balding like a widow's peak, and he was 200 plus pounds, maybe as heavy as 250 pounds. As you can see, my suspect matches that description more so. And finally, the suspect 
doesn't seem to have any maniac behavior. Like he has a whole bunch of dead animals in his house. Or he's got a bunch of unsent letters in his basement. Or something, or a huge arrest record. Or something that would stick out that make him look suspicious as all get out. Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved. And in the next episode, I'm going to introduce a new suspect that was brought about by this discovery that was made about Gary Posty. And I'll explain that to you tomorrow. So I'll see you the next time. Okay, here I found this on uh, Ancestry.com. And so there's Gary Francis Posty and where he was born and when he died. And then over to the right you can see his parents and his spouse. And he has one child that's private listing. And there's his birth and his residence and then the birth of his brother. It doesn't list his older brother. And then the residence, the birth of his next brother, the birth of his next brother. There's five of them all together. And where he went to school. And then it says graduation. I don't know if he graduated or not. I assume he did. And I think they listed it as an assumption that he did. And then he enrolled in the military enlisted excuse me and so uh, I don't know about that I just went by this it's pretty detailed though and then the automobile act accident I found that on the uh, internet through a site New York historic newspapers and then the military and then it has this 1965 March Air Force Base in Riverside. Um, I don't know where the hell he obtained that, but uh, I assume that's correct also. And then the Newsbury Burr story, his marriage, 1971, his residence in Groveland, California, up in the mountains of California kind of gold mining country and this business and I'm going to come back to that and then his father's death and then his retirement from the pine mountain painting company that he started I guess and then his mother's death and then these two um, arrests and then his death and cremation.